This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You are watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. So what I thought I'd do, and hopefully you guys have seen the previous two videos where I broke down the new rankings for the WBC. I did that one as a separate video because it's for one title, as in Deontay Wilder's WBC title, and a few things have been moved around and what have you. And I did a separate video as well, so go check that one out as well, with Anthony Joshua's WBA, IBF, and WBO. So that's all one video as well. Go check out that one. For me, there's quite a few interesting things. So as we know, all the sanctioning bodies here these four main sanctioning bodies which of course are the four main belts for one guy to own all four of these belts would make him undisputed so these are the most important ones but we know that all these sanctioning bodies are corrupt to a point mixed with a little bit of stupidity that's just my opinion so i thought well i'm gonna try and find one where it's got all four of these all mixed up together so we know who is across the world one two whatever it may be and on a platform that cannot be bought and you can't buy your position so it's purely based on a point system not too quite sure what their point system comprises of but anyway so box rec for me seemed to be the one um I'll, i could have used ring magazine but for me ring magazine there's potential for some iffy things shall we say because i believe that golden boy have a big part to do with them so that's why i come up with box rec and i was going to do the top 10 for them ones but as i'm looking down the list there's some um some other things that was pretty important especially when you kind of soak in what you're seeing on the screen right now between these main four sanctioned bodies so of course when you mix it all up i'm going right the way down and i actually stopped at number 66 okay now the reason that i did that one and i'll I'm actually going to be doing it in groups of 10, okay? And uh, you'll see why um, I started off at this point. So automatically, if you to look at these ones here, look at number 52, Trevor Bryan. Now, Trevor Bryan, he is ranked at number four by the WBA. Number four by WBA. But yet across the world, he's ranked 52. Number 54 on this one, Bogdan Dinu. But yet Bogdan Dinu is ranked number 14, by the WBA and IBF. Number 55, Junior Farr. But yet Junior Farr is on the WBA, sorry, the WBO as number 12. But yet here he is at 55. And 56, Alexander Ustinov. Alexander Ustinov is of course ranked with the WBA at number 13. So again, is it a case of the sanctioned bodies are being bought somewhere along the lines or they're just plain stupid? But we'll have to wait and see with this one. But for me, I think Trevor Bryan, in all honesty, should be moved up a lot higher than 52 in the world. I think he's much better than 52 in the world. And you'll see that as the slides go on, as we move up towards the number one spot as well. And Junior Farr, I believe now... I know he is pretty new into the heavyweight, so I don't have too much of an issue with him being ranked 55. A couple of wins should propel him, or all going well anyway. Ustinov, he's at the tail end of his career, so there's only one way he's going to be going, which is down, I believe. But who knows? He's a big puncher at times. Um, but yeah, and just a little slide here, just for us Brits who know the youngsters and what have you. Um, Dave Allen, number 64. 66 martin bacoli which um, i didn't highlight for some reason but yeah martin bacoli is number 66 so all going well he's going to be uh, moving on i bet he's 11 i know at the minute but dave allen fresh on a win over nick webb is number 64 55 is daniel dubois so already that's a pretty good position but i'm pretty sure the wbo will probably have him ranked number one very soon because he's a frank one fighter that's kind of how it works and um, i highlighted david price because we all know david price but for me i think david price should be ranked a little bit higher than 53 some of you may disagree and of course 51 in joe joyce and again i did some of this because i'm pretty sure that uh, you'll agree with me that the likes of bacoli dave allen dubois david price and joe joyce could probably beat some of the guys as we go through the slides so that is the top 66 so from 51 to 66 ranked in the world so let's move on to a little bit higher number 41 to 50 so these are the top 50 in the world and right away there's some names on there that kind of have me a little bit mystified as to why they are in this position carlos takam again for me 
he should be a little higher. Now, I know he's lost his last two fights, one of them was against Anthony Joshua, but he's ranked number one in the world, okay? So just to give you like a little bit of a spoiler um, for some slides ahead, but Anthony Joshua is ranked number one in the world. And of course, Derek Chisora, where he was dominating Derek Chisora, let's be honest. Tactically from Chisora, potentially, but dangerous, definitely. But either way, um, in round number eight, was it? Was it eight or, or nine? I've forgotten. But um, Derek Chisora caught Derek, um, Carlos Takam and dropped him. For me, that doesn't warrant such a one hell of a drop going from the IBF mandatory, the number one, all the way down to number 41. That's pretty harsh for losing to Joshua and Derek Chisora. But anyway, that is what it is. Now, Fujimoto, number 42. Now, of course, he's a Japanese fighter, but he is currently ranked at number seven by the WBO. I believe he's undefeated or he may have lost one fight, I'm not too sure. But either way, I think that's a little bit low, that's just my opinion. Uh, Zizi Zhang, again, you know, he's ranked pretty highly as well, especially with the WBO number 13. So it's either WBO don't know what the hell they're doing or the world rankings is a little bit iffy in itself, I don't know, especially based on some of these points. And you'll see that as we go up, that the points are massively different. Which is why, for me, if you were to put some of these fighters in with some of the other higher-ranked ones, I believe some of these lower ones would win. Tony Yoka as well, undefeated, he is, and a potential prospect for the future. But, of course, you know, former Olympian gold medalist, of course, and he is still a baby in the sense of a pro. So who knows how Tony Yoka is going to go. But, I mean, I highlighted him because I thought he was a little bit low. But, I don't know, I suppose thinking about it, it's probably about right. And is he a goner? As well, I mean, he's only lost one fight. Now it's a dominant Brazil in a war. It's only a five rounder, but that was one hell of a fight. If you haven't seen that fight, please go check it out. It's awesome. 46 is a bit low, in my opinion. Maybe a bit of inactivity hasn't helped his cause on this one, potentially. And Robert Hellenius as well, where he was ranked quite highly with a WBC when Dylan White beat him. And he's now all the way down in number 47. Again, maybe some inactivity may contribute to some of that. But anyway, that's what that is. So for me, I think that uh, some of these guys are a little bit low ranked, in, in just my opinion. Of course, you let me know yours. Obviously, wait until the end of the video because you'll see why I'm saying it as well. So let's move on to the top 40. So 31 to 40. Already number one, um, 31, Eric Molina. Come on, man. Really? Eric Molina. Anyway, so 32, Marius Wack. 33, Philip Hershevic, 34, Bermain Stavern, and 35, Marlo Dessa, 36, Gerald Washington, 37, Amir Mansour, 38, Oscar Rivas, and 39, Nathan Gorman, with number 40, Michael Hunter. Now, some things that, again, stand out for me is Amir Mansour. I don't know why he's all the way down the bottom. He's a very, very avoided fighter, and he's much better. Listen, he's getting on in age. There's, that's not hard behind that, he's about 44, 45 years old. Um, but he's dangerous and has been doing pretty good. And his last fight, I don't know um, if he would have won that last fight, but for me, was it against Kuzman, I think it was. And um, they had like a, um, a clash of heads or something happened and the fight was deemed a draw or a no contest. But at this point, you know, he's been WBC international champion on several occasions. And yet they want to keep him right the way down. I don't know whether this is a personal thing because he's been in prison. I have no idea. But again, with Oscar Rivas as well, you see, Oscar Rivas is number 38 in the world. But yet, if you look at the WBC, he's number 11 in the world. And for me, I think that this is a little bit low. It's just my opinion. Um, I've never seen him fight, but it's just my opinion. If you're ranked quite highly in the WBC, in theory, you should be ranked a little bit higher than what you are in the world rankings, right? That's just my opinion. I mean, you know, we could look at the likes of Gerald Washington, Bermain Stavern, um, Hitchovic as well. Um, for me, he had a very good fight against Tom Little. Um, I haven't seen too much of him other than that, but he looked real good. Marius Wack is a lot tougher than what he's deemed. But again, you see, he's all the way down here. Eric Molina, deservedly so, I think. And Nathan Gorman's on the rise. So out of the British prospects at the minute, he's leading the charge at number 39. So ahead of the likes of Daniel Dubois and others and Joe Joyce, etc. as well. But for me, this doesn't mean that Nathan Gorman beats Joe Joyce or Dave Allen or anybody else. This doesn't mean that. Maybe he can. I don't know. But you no, know, I suppose time will have to tell. But I don't want to dwell too much on this one. And obviously you make it your own mind as we go along. So let's move into the top 30. 
again, you know, if you were to look at some of the rankings, it's unbelievable. I mean, look at number 21, okay? You've got Otto Wallin. Now, Otto Wallin is ranked pretty highly, number 11 by the WBO, number 9 by the IBF, and number 9 by the WBA. So why is it that he's all the way down to 21? Maybe, I mean, he's undefeated, he's from Sweden, but I don't know, I mean, 20 and 0 seems like pretty good. And for me, I don't know, I think he should be a little bit higher, that's just my opinion. Much like Tom Schwartz. Now, Tom Schwartz, um, again, if you look at the WBO, he's number four. So that could well be a severe problem with the WBO. They don't know what they're doing, potentially. I don't know. I really don't know why Tom Schwartz is 22. And all the way down at number 29, but yeah, he's the WBA regular champion in Manuel Char, where he has a guaranteed fight with the WBA super champion, which currently is Anthony Joshua, because they want to combine the two WBA belts into one. So Manuel Char, and he's a legitimate world champion. I know some people don't like the regular belts and all that kind of thing, but still, he is a world champion. Yeah, he's number 29. So, you know, um, but I mean, there are some ones on here that I can probably agree with. I don't like the fact that Erkan Tepe is on there at all. I really don't, but that is what it is. Um, Arthur Spilker down at number 30. Yeah, that's probably about right. I could probably agree with that one. Uh, Sergei Kuzmin, well, um, for me, he could go on and do some great things. He's 12 and 0 at the minute. He's 31 years old, so you know he does need to get moving. But for me, he could be one of the ones to be looking at over the next couple of years. Bryant Jennings again. I could probably agree with that. Lucas Brown. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe. But Yuan Duapa, he's number 23. Yeah, he's ranked on a couple of the sanctioned bodies, WBA and WBC, I believe. Definitely WBC. I don't know about WBA. I think it is. Um, so why is he in number 23 down here? It's kind of odd, isn't it? But anyway, so moving on from that one. And this is where things get quite interesting for the more popular fighters, I suppose. The top 20. Now... Number 11, Derek Chisora, fresh after a win over Carlos Takam. He's number 11 in the world. But yet before then, he's losing to the likes of Ajit Kabiel. And before then, he lost to Dillian White. And before then, he's lost to Tarson Fury and many, many others. In fact, he's got eight losses on his record. Yet he's number 11 in the world. For me, I think there's quite a few fighters below him that could potentially beat him. I'm not saying they definitely would because I like Derek Chisora. Just that I don't have much confidence in him turning up to each fight as in turning up to win he just turns up to just get a payday it seems so number 11 i think it's pretty high for him to be fair but you know what he's a brit and i'm happy for him that's all i can really say adam kalnaki that's a very good position for him undefeated 17 and 0 polish american um real good christian hammer of course he's been on a bit of a roll obviously he defeated david price and he had um not a bad fight with Alexander Povetkin, but I think he was afraid of Povetkin and pretty much ran. And of course, um, Christian Hammer has lost to Tyson Fury once before as well. Marco Huck at number 14. I don't want to be rude, but why is Marco Huck even there? He's a cruiserweight. Now, I know he has had a couple of fights at uh, heavyweight, like um, Povetkin and that, but predominantly he's a cruiserweight, right? He shouldn't really be there. But I don't know. That's just my opinion. And of course, number 19, Huey Fury. You know what? I would probably pick Huey Fury in number 19 to beat number 16 in Alexander Dimitrenko. Certainly Thomas Adamek. Again, Thomas Adamek, he's got a fight coming up on October the 6th against Jaron Miller. And I'll probably pick him to beat Christian Hammer as well and Derek Chisora. That's just my opinion. Now, he, he, you see, he's had one loss and that was against Joseph Parker. Maybe his inactivity are contributing to this position, but he is the British heavyweight champion after beating Sam Sexton. Which, okay, that's fine. But he does have 21 wins as well. So to be number 19, again, you probably see why I'm going to... I'm not necessarily complaining too much because he is young and, it, you know, it is early days. But you kind of see when we get into the top 10 as well for some of these that I think that some of these things could be jiggled around a little bit. Um, Andy Ruiz Jr., number 17. For me, he should be a little higher. I mean, for me, Andy Ruiz Jr., he beats Dimitrenko and Adamek and Hammer and Chisora. Kalnaki, I'd love to see Kalnaki and Andy Ruiz Jr. to be honest. I'd love to see that fight. Um, Julong Zhang, now you see, I thought he was the other one, <laughs> the other Zhang, and, uh, but you know what, I was wrong. But yeah, yeah, the other Zhang is ranked highly on the official rankings, but on this one, 
he's ranked way below this one so i don't know interesting times that is for sure so let's get on to the bit that i'm sure a lot of you guys have probably been waiting for if you don't know already which is the top 10. have a little look soak it in hopefully you can read it and it's on your screen okay um i'll read it out for you anyway anthony joshua number one deontay wilder number two number three alexander povetkin number four tanya bellew five tyson fury six dillian white seven jaron miller eight lewis ortiz nine dominic brazil and ten joseph parker now there's a couple of bits that i'm not too convinced about on this one now before we get into that one if you used to look at the point system, of course, if you've been looking at the slides closely, you'll see the point system that Boxrec use. Look at the points that Anthony Joshua has got, 672 points. And if you've been going through the slides, you'll see that the points are pretty close together as we go up. So a win or two here and there would boost up a few people. But yeah, you look at the other champion in Deontay Wilder, 389 points. So Joshua's got almost double the points that he's got, double. So yet, yeah, Deontay Wilder's got had 40 fights and Anthony Joshua's had 21. Yeah, he's got double the amount of points. And this is what I've been saying to you, that although Wilder's got a crap load of points and a crap load of knockouts, which of course get, gets you good points for all this, but who's he been fighting? This is the issue. So resumes matter. And this one quite clearly states what the, what the resumes show. But Anthony Joshua in half the fights has doubled the damn points almost unbelievable so for me Deontay Wilder and all his fans who keep protecting him and making excuses you know at least admit he's got a very very poor resume of people that he's fought I mean 40 wins don't get me wrong I mean could I fight 40 people and beat them one after the other unlikely so you know what he's uh, definitely um, shown a bit of salt but still either way anyway so back on to it all um, some things that are a little bit iffy for me number four tony bellew number five tyson fury now tyson fury of course in number five here and he's number five on the wbc but he's not ranked at all on any of the other sanctioned bodies from where he was previously champion where he got stripped of the title due to inactivity or he got um or he vacated them at the end because he went off with depression and all that kind of thing so he's been out of the ring for two and a half years but yet these guys haven't ranked him yet the wbc do why because they want to make it look like deontay wilder is taking on a legitimate top contender for the first time in his career well we can't know the truth now tyson fury is lineal which makes you i don't know automatically number one right to be a lineal champion means you that you are number one but of course he hasn't been fighting for two and a half years and he did against Zephyr Safari in his comeback and his next fight against Francisco Pianetta over in Belfast next weekend but these two do not warrant a number five place in the world so WBC and this one seem a little bit wrong but overall they've given Tyson Fury the points because he is the lineal and he is undefeated so that's kind of why they've done it um not I mean, I don't particularly agree with it because he's got like one great win on his resume over Vladimir Klitschko, but yet he's only got 207 points. But anyway, but yet Tony Bellew is ranked higher than him. Now, I would pick at, right at this moment in time, I would probably pick Tony Bellew to beat Tyson Fury because I don't think Tyson Fury can beat anybody in that top 10 right now. This time next year, totally different story. I'll probably be picking Tyson Fury to probably beat all of them, to be fair. Potentially anyway. He may struggle with a couple. Um, but... Either way, Tony Bellew, number four. He's beaten back-to-back -back David Hay, a very shot David Hay. So, again, this goes back to the whole Tyson Fury thing. Tyson Fury was out of the ring for two and a half years. Didn't even step foot in the ring. When David Hay was out for three years. And look at the, the condition that David Hay come back in. He was in phenomenal condition, but no longer had the timing, the reflexes, or anything. And this is my problem with Tyson Fury. But yet, Tony Bellew gets a fourth position in the world. Now, I know that um, he's number one with the WBC because he's WBC or was WBC Cruiserweight Champion. And he is still the WBC Cruiserweight Emiratus Champion. So, okay, that's fine. But this is heavyweight. This isn't Cruiserweight. This is heavyweight. And it's very unlikely he's ever going to have another heavyweight fight again. Of course, he'd love Tyson Fury, but Tyson Fury is going to go for Deontay Wilder. Clearly, he sees Deontay Wilder as an easier fight for him than Tony Bellew. But anyway, that is what it is. But he's number four in Tony Bellew. I disagree with it. I know Eddie Hernan that won't like me saying this, but 
I have to be honest, I do disagree with it. So if you were to look at the entire rankings, number one to number 10, I don't have too much of an issue with it, to be honest. Outside of Bellew and Tyson Fury, but I know why Tyson Fury is there, and I can kind of understand why, why Tony Bellew is in the top 10, but certainly not number four. I mean, could you pick Tony Bellew to beat any of these guys, maybe outside Tyson Fury? Could you pick any of those guys to lose to Tony Bellew? I'm not sure I could. Could you pick Tyson Fury to beat any of those other top 10? As of right now, I don't think so. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Obviously, you dropped me yours. But number one by a damn landslide is Anthony Joshua. And he's set to take on Alexander Povetkin next on September 22nd at Wembley Stadium, who is number three ranked in the world. And if you look at Anthony Joshua, once he gets past Alexander Povetkin, all going well, of course, touch wood and all that, then he would have beaten Alexander Povetkin. Number six, Dillian White. And number 10, and nine, Dominic Brazil and Joseph Parker. So that would be four of the current top 10 that Anthony Joshua has beaten. Bearing in mind, he also ho holds a position in the top 10 in number one. So out of nine opponents, potentially, he's already beaten four of them once Povetkin comes along. Deontay Wilder, as of right now, he's beaten Luis Ortiz, number eight. So, you know, there's a whole world of difference. But of course, if he was to beat Tyson Fury again, I don't agree with this damn fight. But, you know what, just going on the points and the bases right here, that would make it two. So, anyway, you drop your thoughts below. What do you think about all this? Um, do you agree with these rankings? Do you, do you agree with the top 10? Do you agree with the top 66 even? Or which ones would you move around? Anyway, you drop your thoughts below. Click that thumbs up. Subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.